fact that Russ said you can't be blackballed. Do you want to watch the video on it or anything? Get a little context or you remember? Yeah, I, 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 I remember the clip. All right, so go ahead and break down like what you remember and then we're going we're gonna to talk about it. Yeah, so if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, we probably should have played it, but if I'm remembering correctly, he was saying that you can't be blackballed because um, – like just because like the energy can't stop the tools mm-hmm. that you kind of have to reach people, right? Yeah. Like they can't con- they can't control your recording process. They can't control your access to your audience through social media. So are you saying that the only way you can truly be blackballed is like industry people stopping to do things to help you? But I think he made the point that like like regular artists can get like a Spotify connect. You know what I'm saying? Like or I mean or even if they don't, they still can't stop the access you have to people. And a lot of times, right. like, their forces the hand. Right of these bigger institutions, right? We might not like you, but if you're doing, you know, X amount of thousands of streams or millions of streams in this world, then it's like, well, shit, like, we're gonna look crazy about not yeah. working with you, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's the that's the general point he was making. I don't know if I'm missing anything with that, but. No, I think that's about right, because I yeah. know there's like the, the baby that's been popping up, and then there's Tory Lanez, Tory Lanez yeah. right? They both have had their issues where it might split the industry in some ways is tar in terms of how some people other people behind the scenes talk about it. But I'm with him in terms of you can't be blackballed in the traditional way. Yeah. Right. There's no stopping you from being seen by the world completely. Yo, what happened to buddy? Like yeah. that that can't happen. I think the funny thing about it is to an artist like Tory Lanez, to an artist like the baby, them being blackballed is really them just getting treated like a re- regular ass artist. artist yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, you don't have access to those additional resources <laughs> in the industry machine anymore. So, yeah, it's like, okay, you get blocked out of maybe some of that right there. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, now you just got to eat like the rest of these artists eat. But y'all are in a better position because at least you had a certain level of awareness. You probably got a certain amount of fans. Some of them probably were fake. Um, depending on, well, not, and that's not even talking on them specific, but like just the way some people might blow, okay, you might not have as many fans you think you have, but even that, you know, it's what the regular artists got to deal with. Like yeah. they got to deal with the real numbers, make real decisions based off of that. And if they want some connects, like what you said, I got to figure out how to finesse and get somebody to like me inside Spotify. Yeah, I got to talk. I got to reach out. I got <laughs> to figure reach out. out. Got to reach out. Yeah. And I mean, like, I think that like, that's the part of it that. Uh, I feel like it's more of like a falling from grace type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like if your yeah. last year and a half, two years, you know what I'm saying, your idea of a promo strategy was like, yo, I'm going to hit the VMAs and then I'm going to be on this late night TV show. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be the, the face of most necessary and like rap cat. Like I, I can understand like how it feels like then you've been pushed out of your, your yep. major, your major, um, your major marketing machine, right? But yep. what's interesting about, the way that I guess Russ is seeing it is it, it feels a lot more traditional. Well, like he's basically saying like, bro, like those are just industry institutions. Like, yeah, you can yeah. be pushed out of the industry circle, but like if your goal is really just to make money in this shit and do well, like you'll be good. Facts. If your goal is to be a part of the institution, then yeah, you got a problem. Like right. it's, a, it's a real thing to worry about. But if you just like, man, like, like you were saying, they can't like blackball you in the traditional sense of, we gonna truly cut your money off. Yep. Exactly. Like we saw with Tori, it's like, bro, as long as you can post on your Instagram and post on TikTok and you understand back end infrastructure, like, you'll be all right, you know? And it's, it's interesting because I think that whole conversation is, or I, I feel like we, and it's going to sound wild, but I feel like we need to see more artists that get blackballed that are forced to go through that process. Because mm. I think more people need to see that it's possible to do it without those type of institutions support you. We saw it first with the 6 9 shit, right? It was kind of the first time people talking like, damn, bro, he ain't, yeah. people ain't rocking with him, and but he's still doing crazy numbers, yeah. right? That, that opened the conversation. And then uh, NBA Youngboy, right? I was right? to say, was like NBA, 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 people need to be watching, buddy. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, then here comes NBA Youngboy, blackballed, or, you know, air quote blackballed, but still doing crazy is numbers, he, right? Is blackball even the word we use for him? Like, what? I still don't quite understand his situation, why he's not getting the support. Like, maybe I missed that part. I wasn't paying attention at that time. But, yeah, like, his, why are people not, like, rocking with him like he should be from an industry side of things? Yeah, so some of it is, I think, like, earlier antics. Like, early NBA Youngboy was pretty pretty wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, young street artists. This is yeah. to be expected. Yeah. And then some of it is, like, politics between him and the little dark beef. You know what I'm saying? Like, like mm-hmm. so it's like. Yeah, yeah. 
certain aspects, I guess Dirk could be seen as the big artist. You know, it's in certain points, probably a lot more people siding with him over. And what aspects is Dirk a bigger artist in NBA? I mean, I don't know. Well, I think from a mainstream look standpoint. I would say I don't, it's yeah. not even close in terms of reality. Yeah, but but also yeah. that it's like he has that look. He looks bigger to that point, but it's because they're not fucking with NBA. That's, what? The, like, like that's that. the crazy part about like the industry <laughs> perception and how that goes because – Look, you know, I don't have any size in this race or whatever. You know what I mean? No horse in this race. I, I listen to Dirk shit. I listen to NBA Youngboy. But just mathematically, as far as I've seen, NBA Youngboy blows him out the park. Industry-wise, like, obviously, Dirk is a, a, a far bigger phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. He could probably, because of that, monetize and get bigger looks. And outside of the industries, that brand building might end up having more money long term because of that. Unless, yeah, you know, yeah. NBA might flip that money into real estate. You know, and real estate don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're going for catalog. So, well, catalog, too. Yeah, you're going for catalog. Especially, bro, we know yeah. the numbers people are getting <laughs> off of the buyouts, right? Yeah. These multiples. So, so I don't know, man. It's it's interesting one to see him. So if you look at him, you look at Russ. All right, these are people who are big and doing it without yeah. in a current day climate. But like you said, you were like, all right, part of this black ball is okay. I might I might not be able to pull up to the MTV Awards. Yeah, and as a part of my rollout, I might not be able to pull up to uh, the Jimmy Fallon show, Ellen, and all these things that that were a part of my rollout. Yeah, but guess what? You can pull up to Logan Paul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can pull yeah. up to, uh, what's it, K-Sai or whatever his name is. Yeah, like, yeah. any of these YouTubers and people like that, a lot of people, y'all need to start using a PR strategy where y'all just, like, I mean, not no. Y'all need to, you can add that on. But if you don't have those big traditional shows which don't have any impact anyway like most of them yeah we like, let's not it's even con, get in. You know, content generation exactly yeah, yeah. Well, let's not get into the tv <laughs> show that never mind um it was bring up on the episode i was gonna talk about the tv show that uh one of the clients were supposed to be on and the, sh- the show was trash or whatever uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> well they were on it but the ratings were trash but um but yeah, so it's like, yeah, like Tory Lanez, it's still Tory Lanez. The baby is still the baby. Now, you know, there's going to be some communities that don't rock with him because of some of the things they said, but there's plenty of people yeah. who are still going to give him that interview. And yeah, we bro. know Vlad's going to interview everybody. He don't yeah. give a fuck, you know, what kind of, he wants those views. Yeah. So like the, me- the pull up, the media run is there, man. There's so many third party uh, publications. And the funny part about it is, you know, that would be like a nice indie underground wave to follow traditionally. But the difference between doing that back in the day versus doing it today is these indie underground like pages, channels, influencers, they actually have more impact than, yeah, way more, yeah. than the traditional. So yeah. it's like yeah. a weird mindset that people are still going for it. And they have the chance of. To- like I mean, you know, it's like you you post things on the internet. Everybody has the chance to go viral. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like every day you post, is that's a that's a little little shot in the dark at it, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's like it could be like a smaller page could give you just as much, if not more, of an impact than the bigger accounts. They maybe to get you like big yep. reach consistently, right? Yep. Just because they have the audience. But like I've seen bigger moments come from like a page that be small, bro, like twenty thousand followers and like a random artist post pop off and get twenty million views on it. You're like, damn, that's crazy. Like, you know, could it have happened from the shade room? Maybe. But Maybe. it didn't. It happened <laughs> it happened over here, right? Because the internet would have cost it more. <laughs> yeah, it would have cost more, exactly. The bang for buck hundred percent wouldn't happen yeah. the same. It's like, damn, I just paid I don't want to say no number, but it's like I just paid <laughs> forty bucks for a twenty million dollar post or some shit because it just right. the world looked up. But I think that that's the part that's not like seen enough. You know, so I don't think people still think of these Instagram accounts as like media entities, right? Like when you think media entity, you think, you know, radio stations, you know what I'm saying, big publications. Yeah. I don't think they're thinking about like, oh shit, I could just go live or like at rap and do an interview. And like the thing about like these people and like you mentioned the influencers versus the industry stuff is like, bro, the influencers don't care. As long as you got the money to pay for it. And they like you, right? Of course, they got to see your audience connection. They got to like you, but it's, it's money-based. So it's like, 
they don't give a fuck about none of the industry stuff. It's just like, yo, do does my audience know you or like you or do I like you? And can you afford this invoice? If you can, if those things are in order, like you're all right. You know what I'm saying? You're Thanks. gonna be good. You're gonna be good. So I, I think like that's yeah. why I say I feel like a lot more artists, as fucked up as it sounds, need to get blackballed because it's the only way I think artists underneath them are gonna pay attention. To watch a bigger artist have to go through that and figure that stuff out, like we all had to watch, you know, like Tory figure out and like a six nine NBA young one, all these different people figure it out. Like they have people paying attention to them. Like the the indie artists that's coming up that's doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there are a lot of indie artists who do do that and they're like they're smart for doing it, but they're they're not gonna be popping enough for another couple of years for like the industry a whole right to pay attention. So it's gonna take right. these like massive stars falling off and then we all watching them try to figure out and them going through the same process as other artists for us to go like or for everybody else to go like damn like. I could just do that, you know what I'm saying? I could, right. I could get, you could get you an interview get with, creative. yeah, you could get an interview with the music page before you could probably get on Jimmy Fallon, you know what I'm saying? Easy, bro. Easy. Easy. <laughs> the crazy thing is, like, the reason it has so much more impact is, one, some of them are just underutilized, period, right? Yeah. So, there's some age, I'm just going to say rap because you say rap, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. They're, like, People haven't exploited it to that extent yet. Maybe they're trying to keep people from doing. I don't know. Maybe people have tried, but because of that, people are going to look at it as a new thing, right? But that might run out, yeah. right, after a certain period of time. But what's not going to run out is these influencers who have a legitimate perspective and they truly a and r who they let on their platform. Yeah. Right, and that's what we love about TikTok so much. I was like, man, I was so surprised. At, like, you were like, ah, oh, nah, I can't put that song on yeah. my platform. I can't do a dance to that song because my people aren't going to want to listen to it. They're going to know it's trash. I don't like it. It's not going to get any <laughs> views. Yeah. The algorithm's not going to like it. Like, it's all bad. So I'm just not going to take the money. Yeah. But because of that, people have so much more respect and value because it's actually like I gave it the okay. Yeah. All right. Like, Anthony Fantano talks about something, he gives it opinion, people respect it and think it's him you know what i mean sean yeah. c talks about something and he gives his perspective they respect it and feel like it's coming from him because it's not attached to uh you know the industry and all that stuff but yeah. someone gets on the mtv awards bt awards or whoever grammys you like i don't know how this person got up in here yeah. like, it was like i you guess know. they're important because yeah. they're there yeah. but i don't know who the fuck that is yeah. <laughs> like you just know they know somebody yeah. We know they know somebody, yeah. right? That's how we think now where we are. But from a fan, you just like, yeah, who's, who's that? Yeah, who's that? You know yeah. what I mean? And you might kind of give it some credence, like maybe they're important and maybe they're good because they're there. You might. Like, especially back in the day, it definitely would be a little bit more um, for that. But now it's just more like, who is that? You go on your life. It's so much content. You don't remember the person yeah. versus if my favorite YouTuber, my favorite TikToker or whoever says this shit goes and you're like, who is that? And I'm going to check it out because I follow this person because I almost look at them, you know, like a friend, right? We have mm -hmm. something in common, right? Yeah. So if they like it, I might listen to it. If you recommend it, I'm way more likely to check out the shit than, I don't know, somebody. That I, I don't know how you rock, buddy. I don't, I've never heard yeah. you play any music. Yeah. I don't know how you dress. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you eat plain food without season. I don't, we might not be at a cross the same, you know? So like that's the value of, I don't know, man. These underground influencers. We're going. We've been talking about that part for years, though. So, you know, I think mean, we've obviously implemented before with artists, and we've seen some artists do it well. But I'm just so surprised that the tipping point has not come. Where, you know, what I'm saying like you see people going hard yeah. on that shit. I mean, I, I I kind of have my my theories. I think a part of it is like. Every time a one gets really big, the industry does come and snatch them up. 